Hello, and welcome to the next module of this course on continuous integration and continuous delivery with Jenkins Pipelines. In the last module, we built a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline for a Java API project using Jenkins, Gradle, and Artifactory. In this module, we will build a similar pipeline, but with another build tool called Maven. So let's get started. In this session, we will create a new continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline for a simple web Java application. Before we dive into the project, let's get familiar with the overall structure of the project and the components we will be using for it. As usual, we will store our Java source code in Bitbucket. But this time around, we will use Maven as our build framework. Maven is a build automation tool used primarily for Java projects. Maven addresses two aspects of building software. First, it describes how software is built. And second, it describes its dependencies. Contrary to preceding tools like Apache Ant, it uses conventions for the build procedure and only exceptions need to be written down. An XML file describes the software project being built, its dependencies on other external modules and components, the build order, directories, and required plugins. It comes with predefined targets for performing certain well-defined tasks, such as compilation of code and its packaging. Maven dynamically downloads Java libraries and Maven plugins from one or more repositories, such as Maven 2 Central Repository, and stores them in a local cache. Maven can also be used to build and manage projects written in C Sharp, Ruby, Scala, and other languages. The Maven project itself is hosted by the Apache Software Foundation. After building our source code, we will deploy our web application onto an Apache Tomcat server. All right, let's start by reviewing our source code for our Java web application project. Since our application will be built using Maven build framework, the most important file we should look at first and foremost is the POM XML file which acts as the build definition file for Maven. This file can be found in the root of the project because that is where Maven expects it to reside. A project object model, or POM, is the fundamental unit of work in Maven. It is an XML file that contains information about the project and configuration details used by Maven to build the project. For this project, we have chosen to demo a build which builds multiple modules as part of the same build definition. Right now, we only have one module definition in this POM XML called multi3. But if and when we add new modules, we can build those modules with the same POM XML file, and each one of those modules may produce a different artifact like jar or war file. The minimum requirements for a POM are project root, model version, group ID, the ID of the project's group, artifact ID, the ID of the artifact or the project, version, the version of the artifact under the specified group. A POM requires that its group ID, artifact ID, and version be configured. These three values form the project's fully qualified artifact name. This is in the form of group ID, colon, artifact ID, colon, version. So for our example, its fully qualified artifact name is tutorial.noodle.tetra, colon, multi, colon, three, dot, nine, dash, tetra. If the configuration details are not specified, Maven will use the default values for those missing settings. One of these default values is the packaging type. Every Maven project has a packaging type. If it is not specified in the POM, then the default value jar will be used. Besides that, we also specify a name for our build project, which in this case is simple multi-modules build. 
For testing our code, we are specifying that we will use JUnit test framework. We will also use maven.war.plugin for creating a Java web application and another plugin for Maven source. Okay, now let's explore the multi-3 package and the source files that we have created within this application. We will navigate back up into our source repository, and here it is. This, in fact, is a very simple application and has its own Palm XML. Let's review it now. The packaging type here has been specified as WAR, and we have also updated the name to Multi3, corresponding to the name of the application we are trying to deploy. And here under the plugins, we are again using the Maven WAR plugin for creation of our WAR file. What is a WAR file? And how does it differ from a JAR file? Well, both files are similar in nature in that these files are simply zipped files using the Java JAR tool. But these files are created for different purposes. The JAR files contains libraries, resources, and accessory files like property files. The WAR file contains the web application that can be deployed on the servlet JSP container. The WAR file contains JSP, HTML, JavaScript, and other files necessary for the development of web applications. We can deploy our application into Tomcat Apache or any other application server using the WAR files. Okay, so after reviewing our source files, let's move ahead with building our continuous integration and continuous delivery CI CD pipeline. Here we are on our home page for Jenkins. We will click on New Item to create a Jenkins job. First, let's name it git underscore source because this job will take a source code from git. And we will select Freestyle Project as the project type and click OK. First of all, let's customize the settings for discarding our old builds. This is a good practice which helps keep our build history clean and efficient. Let's keep the builds for two days and keep only the last five builds. Next, we need to manage our source code repository configuration. Here again, we will need to specify the URL for our Git repository. We will head to our Bitbucket console and click on the Overview tab. And here on the right upper corner, we will find our git repo URL. Let's copy it and paste it here in our Jenkins job definition. Now we have kept our repo access open to the public, so there is no need to add any git credentials. If you are working with a private or enterprise repo and you need to pass in credentials to access your source code, you can do so by clicking on this Add Credentials button. Now, let's proceed with the next steps in our Jenkins job configuration. Scroll down to the Build Environment section and select this option, Delete Workspace Before Build Starts. This is a really important step. It ensures that all builds are valid, so we should take extra care to clean out the workspace. This makes sure that the leftovers from previous builds do not affect the current build. Now we are ready to move to the meat of this job definition, which is to define our build steps. We will scroll down to the build section and click on add build step. As we reviewed earlier, we have various options for build steps available here. Besides the out-of-the-box options like Execute Shell, Execute Windows Batch Command, new options get added to this menu as we install relevant add-ons to Jenkins. Since our project is a Maven project, with Palm XML available in the root of the project, we will need to run this build job as a Maven build. This can be accomplished in three ways. We can just execute shell command to execute the required build steps, or we can pick invoke artifactory maven3, 
This option is available to us by the virtue of the Artifactory plugin. The Jenkins Artifactory plugin supports running Maven 3 builds from freestyle jobs by using a Maven 3 build step plus a build environment section for the Artifactory Maven 3 integration, artifact and build information deployment. Or we can just pick Invoke Top Level Maven Targets. Invoke Maven 3 is provided by the Artifactory plugin, whereas Invoke Top Level Maven Targets is a part of the standard Jenkins distribution. What is the difference and what is better to use? Let's review a couple of these options. If we use the shell command, we will configure our job to execute the shell command MVN package. Here, this command will use the default version of Maven, which has been installed and configured on the Jenkins server, which in our case is Maven 3.0. So the shell command will use all the default values for the configuration and settings for the running of Maven. If we want to use invoke top level Maven targets, here we can specify our goals. And after clicking this advanced button, we can also specify our properties, options, and settings file. So this gives us much more flexibility and control over our builds. By the way, if you need to use a particular version of Maven, we can configure it in global tool configuration, just like we configured Gradle in the previous session. Let's review it quickly. We will go to Jenkins homepage, then click on the Manage Jenkins menu and then click on Global Tool Configuration. Here on this Global Configuration page, find the section for Maven, and to add a particular version of Maven, we can click on this Add Maven button. And now, Jenkins will allow us to download and install this particular version of Maven on our Jenkins server. The Install Automatically option will ensure the required version of Maven is automatically downloaded and installed whenever a build needs it. Here we can specify a particular name for our Maven instance and also customize the Maven home path for our Maven instance. So this is how you can have full control over the Maven installation. For now, we will keep things simple and use the default Maven installation for our job via shell command. Let's head back to the job definition. For this job, we will be creating a pipeline for our build. In order to build this pipeline, we will select a post build action to chain our job actions in the pipeline. For our post build action, we will select archive the artifacts option. What does this mean? Well, after our MVN package command runs, it will build our simple Java web application and produce a WAR file. This WAR file will be copied into our source code directory structure under the module multi3 folder, under the target subfolder. These artifacts can be managed by our post build action and archived. All we need to do is supply a path to our artifacts. Let's specify that path multi3 forward slash target forward slash asterisk dot war. This will look for all war files which are created in this target folder as a result of our build. Okay, now our build definition is ready. Let's apply these settings by clicking on the apply button and then clicking save. Great, we have configured our first job. Now that we have configured our job, let's run it and verify everything has been set up correctly. Let's get back to the Jenkins homepage and click on our new job. Here we will click this Build Now on the left menu to run our build and verify everything has been wired up correctly. Okay, our build has started. Let's check out the console output for our build. Let's give it a minute to finish the build. You will notice as Jenkins is building our project, it is also dynamically downloading the necessary software for each step. Okay, great. Now our build is done. Let's review the logs. 
Here we can see our main POM XML represented by the name Simple Multi-Module Build was successful and our module Multi3 was successful as well. Next, the archival of our artifacts was successful. Let's go to our Git source job and check out the workspace for our build. As we can see here, the artifacts from the last successful build have been generated and stored under last successful artifacts. You can see we have the multi 3 39 tetra war available here. That is the exact output with the proper naming convention we expected. Okay, excellent. Everything seems to be in order. Now we are ready to start creating our pipeline. Let's make a pipeline view for our project. We will name it war underscore tetra underscore noodle underscore deployment, and we will select this build pipeline view option. Then click OK to build our pipeline view. Let's skip most of these settings, which are not essential, and focus on the initial job setting. This is the job which will kick off the entire pipeline. We want our git source job to be the first job in this pipeline. As such, we will select that as our initial job. We will also enable some other settings like show pipeline project headers, show pipeline parameters project headers, show pipeline parameters in revision box. The settings are pretty self-explanatory and are primarily used to output diagnostic information about the build. You can read about these options by clicking on the help icon next to them on the right hand side. Let's apply our changes to the pipeline and click OK. Here we are in our build pipeline view, but our pipeline contains only one project, which does not really provide us any opportunity to leverage the pipeline capabilities. We ought to create one or more projects which could be chained in this pipeline. So let's create a new project. Our Git source project was responsible for building our code and producing the artifacts. Now with our new job, let's make sure we deploy our application. We will call our new job war underscore deployment and as usual pick freestyle project and then click OK. OK guys, so this particular job will be responsible only for deployment. We do not need to worry about managing old builds. We don't even need to wire up the source control because this job will not interact with the source code at all. As a good practice, we should still enable this option to delete workspace before build starts to make sure we are always deploying the latest version of the deployment package. All we need is to configure this job to be able to copy artifacts from another job. And for that, we will need to install a new plugin called Copy Artifact Plugin. Let's install it now. We will save our Jenkins job for the time being, and we will click on the Jenkins logo to go to the Jenkins homepage. Then click on Manage Jenkins, and here click on Manage Plugins. We will navigate to the Available tab and search for Copy. Here it is, the Copy Artifact plugin. Let's select it and install it without restart. And allow Jenkins to download and install the necessary components for our plugin. OK, great. The plugin has been installed successfully. After successfully installing our plugin, let's go back to our Jenkins homepage. Now we can continue to configure our job. Let's click on the WAR deployment job and click on the configure menu. Scroll down to our build steps section. And in our build step, we now have a new step type, copy artifacts from another project. Once we select this option, we are presented with these configuration options for our target project. We will specify the source project name from where we need to copy the artifacts, exactly how we configured it. So we will type in git underscore source here. You will notice Jenkins is helping us out by auto-suggesting and completing as we type. For the target build, we will select latest successful build. There are various other options available for the target build, but we will keep it simple and just copy the artifacts for the previous successful build. 
artifacts to copy. We can specify exactly which artifacts we intend to copy from our source project. If we do not specify anything, Jenkins will copy all the artifacts the previous project produces. Okay, let's save our configuration and click apply again. Now we need to think about deployment. Once again, like most other features, deployment of the WAR file also needs a special plugin. So let's head to the plugin management console and install this plugin called Deploy to Container. We will switch to the available tab and search for this plugin. Here it is. Let's select it and install without restart. Okay, excellent. It has now been deployed successfully. After the plugin install is successful, we can go back to the top page. Now we can continue to configure our WAR deployment job. Click on the job title and now click on the configure menu. Scroll down to post build actions. You will notice that here a new option has become available called deploy WAR to container. Select this option for the post build action. And now we need to provide additional details to configure this action. First, we need to provide a pattern to look for the required WAR files, which we will be deploying to the target server. For now, let's use the most generic wildcard file path pattern, which will deploy all the files found in the target folder. For instance, if we were only interested in a particular file, say example.war, we could specify that path like so in this configuration setting. But for now, let's keep things simple and deploy everything. Next comes the context path. This is the path where our application will be deployed within our target servlet container. Please note that if you have a standalone version of Apache Tomcat deployed in your network or in the cloud, you may need to map the network DNS address of your Apache Tomcat server by modifying the host file both on our Windows host machine and also your Jenkins Sent OS instance. Let's do that now for our instance. We will open the host file on our Jenkins host using the VI editor. Now let's grab the IP address and host name of our Apache Tomcat server. And update the host file with the mapping. Let's also add the HTTP mapping to make sure Jenkins can successfully connect our Apache Tomcat server. Great. Save the file and quit the editor. Now our Jenkins instance will be able to resolve the DNS name for our Tomcat server and access it without any problems. Let's continue with our job configuration. Coming back to our context path, this is the exact name and path Apache Tomcat will use to deploy your app. In continuous integration and continuous delivery scenarios, sometimes we can use a special pattern for our context path. For instance, we can use this context path, tetra underscore noodle underscore up underscore dollar build number. Basically, this will pull the actual build number of our current build and append to the context path. We can use other environment or Jenkins provided variables here as well. If you want to get a quick glance at all the possible variables you can use, Click a build action of execute shell and down below click on this link. The list of available environment variables. Here is a page with documentation about all the variables available to us within our Jenkins jobs. You can read about them and use them whenever you want. Coming back to our job. This pattern will allow us to push a fresh deployment every time a change is made with the build number for the current job. For the post build action deploy war, we also need to configure a container. For our container, we have Tomcat version 7 and we have configured a standard username and a standard password for our Tomcat server. We will specify those credentials right here. We must emphasize here that using the admin user is only for convenience purposes and it is not recommended for production environments you must ensure that you have a user with appropriate and minimal required permissions set up for these integration scenarios. Finally, we will add the Apache Tomcat URL. We will simply copy it from our browser window and paste it right here. Great, now our job is ready. We can click apply and save our job. 
Now, the next step is to chain up our projects in the pipeline. So for that, we will get back to the configuration area of our job by clicking on the configure link. Here we will scroll down to the build trigger section and select this option called build after other projects are built. And for projects to watch, we will select our git source job. This will trigger the deployment job after this git source job has completed successfully. Thus, this configuration is now taking a shape of a chain of jobs or pipeline. In fact, there is another way we can configure these pipelines. Rather than watching for other jobs to complete and use that event as a trigger, we can configure a post build action on the source job to execute the target jobs. Let's try it out. We will navigate to our jobs home and click on Git Source Job. Here on the configuration screen, we will scroll down to Post Build Action. We will select this Build Other Projects and select the target job. For instance, we can select to trigger WAR Deployment Project. The end result is exactly the same, and the two approaches are merely a difference in semantics. Let's click Apply and save our job. Next, let's go to our Build Pipeline view and start our pipeline. Let's enable Auto Refresh so we can review the pipeline execution in real time. So our Git Source job has started and it's in the process of building our source. Now after Git Source job has completed successfully, WAR deployment has started. Okay, WAR deployment step has failed as signified by the red background for the step. I think we ran into the most common issue we run into while deploying apps in Tomcat. The user we configured in our Jenkins job did not have the right permissions to deploy the app into the container. Let's go ahead and fix that. We will go to our Apache Tomcat server session and edit the Tomcat user's XML file. And here is our admin user. We need to make sure that our user has all these admin level permissions and roles. For instance, admin GUI, admin script, manage JMX, manage status, etc. We have already fixed the issue for this user, so let's go back to our pipeline now and try to run it again. Okay, after our git source job completed successfully, we can see the next deployment job has been kicked off. Let's wait for it to finish. Okay, great. As you can see here, WAR deployment was successful as well. Let's check out the console output by clicking on this tiny console icon. As you can see here in the console output, the deployment of our app was also successful, so everything looks good here. Now, navigate to the Apache Tomcat Application Management Console and click on the Manager App button to navigate to Tomcat Web Application Manager. Here you can see our newly deployed app is available with the name Tetra underscore Noodle underscore app underscore 4. Here 4 represents the build number, which has been assigned by our Jenkins job. Click on our web application and browse. Here is the home page for our simple app. Welcome to Tetra Noodle training site. This is the home page for the Tetra Noodle CI CD training. This verifies that our first web Java application was successfully deployed with Jenkins CI CD pipeline. Let's recap what you learned in this module. First, we implemented a Jenkins job for our Java web application project. Next, we installed and configured several plugins for Jenkins like Copy Artifacts, Deploy WAR plugins, etc. to get Jenkins ready for our end-to-end -end CI and CD pipeline. Then we updated our Jenkins jobs and integrated them with the help of various plugins. Last but not least, we ran our job and deployed the build artifacts from our Jenkins server into our Apache Tomcat container.